Hello. Welcome to Credit Matters TV. My name is John Chambers. I chair Standard & Poor's Sovereign Ratings Committee. Today we're going to tell you about updated methodology, what we call criteria for multilateral lending institutions and other supranational institutions. I'm joined today by two colleagues. The first is Olga Kalinina. She's our criteria officer for sovereigns, supranational institutions, and international public finance. She's based in New York as I am. She will describe the elements of the business profile of the new criteria. The second is Elie Herriard Dubreuil. He's in charge of our analytics on the supranational asset class. He's being patched in from London. He will describe the financial profile metrics of the criteria. So, Olga, tell us a little bit about uh, this new criteria. Thank you, John. Well, first of all, I want to start by saying that we view this criteria as an important advancement in our goal to be transparent and also to publish globally comparable ratings. This particular criteria allow us to present major rating factors for this important sector and to present it in a transparent way to show the main factors that we analyze, how we weigh them, and how we combine them in order to come up with issue credit rating. Broadly based, this criteria comprised of two steps. The first step is assigning the standalone credit profile, which in turn is a combination of the business profile and financial profile. Further, we'll look at the potential uplift from the extraordinary shareholder support through mostly the callable capital. Combination of these two factors gives us the issue of credit rating. So to your question about the business profile, business profile is essentially the combination of two important elements, multilateral lending institution policy importance and risk expertise and also governance evaluation. The first one is essentially uh, within the policy importance, we look into the MLI role and also its stability and strength of its relationship with the shareholders. We also focus on the track record in MLIs fulfilling the public policy mandate through different credit cycles. And also we pay special attention to the analysis of the preferred creditor status, which is a very important, unique feature for this asset class. When we analyze the governance and the risk expertise, we look at the governance rules, we look at the audit, the different types of control that exist in an organization, we look at different risk strategies that are employed by the management, and we we'll also see to what extent the strategic plans are transferred into the financial performance. As I said earlier, the combination of the governance and uh, the policy importance create the business profile. Okay, well thanks Olga. Now, let me turn to you, Ellie. May I ask you to go through how we judge the financial profile of these institutions? Thank you, John. There are two pillars to the financial profile, capital adequacy and funding and liquidity. Our starting point for capital adequacy is the S&P RAC ratio, which we also use to rate commercial banks globally. The details are available from our website in the criteria document called Bank Capital Methodology and Assumptions, which I encourage you to read. We then adjust the ratio to reflect MLI specificities. For example, lending to the public sector usually entails large single name concentrations. At the same time, we expect many MLIs to continue benefiting from preferred creator treatment, which largely offsets the concentration penalization in our adjusted rack ratio. Funding and liquidity ratios consider, on the one hand, the structural gaps of the MLI funding, and on the other hand, for how long the MLI can continue to fulfill its mandate under extremely stressed market conditions without any access to the market. Overall, we believe most MLIs to have extremely strong or very strong financial profile on a standalone basis, underpinned by their high level of paid-in capital, preferred creator treatment, 
as well as conservative funding and liquidity. To factor in extraordinary shareholder support, we include callable capital in the RAC ratios, provided it comes from shareholders rated higher than the MLI. The potential benefit from callable capital is however limited to three notches above the standalone credit profile, or even less, depending notably on the MLI's policy importance. Thank you, Ellie. You can find our methodology for multilateral lending institutions and other supranational institutions on the Sovereigns page at standardandpoors.com. Thank you for watching Credit Matters TV.